Ungemtrag. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show on Ungdoms Radio. Tune in at 98.7 every Monday and Wednesday at 11.30 and every odd Friday at 2 o'clock. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge and if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and, and we <laughs> Awesome. Well, yeah. yes, this is this is a radio guys. So this can happen. Uh, Marta go. I just wanted to say and it's you've got five options show. <laughs> yes, that's actually correct. It's you've got five options show and we are having here again our wonderful technician. Lasse, who actually will become a very famous podcaster. I, I can feel it. And we are now um, talking about the challenge that we have started to talk about on Monday. Uh, Marta will remind it uh, for those of you who have listened and those of you who have not listened to the first part, then you can know what it's all about. Hit it. Yes. So the challenge came from a girl, Tetra, and it goes like that. I have a stalker, kind of. A guy from my class is acting weird. He's bringing me chocolate and my favorite beer whenever I mention something while speaking to others. He signed up to the gym because he saw I was going there. He likes pages on Facebook that I like. Therefore, he will probably read this post. He wants to walk me home from school all the time. What do I do? I can't just stop talking to him because he's my classmate. We work on assignments together all the time. But this is all getting too annoying. Yes, so this is the challenge, guys. And if you are interested what we uh, were talking about in the first episode, you can always try to dig out our podcast. And uh, we, we will have it there. We had a lot of interesting conversations also with Lasse and with a male point of view. But today we will discuss the actual five options we came up with with for Tetra. I will just briefly give you the titles, let's say, and then we will discuss it. So option number one, the raging bull strategy. Approach him head on. Option number two, go for a friendly yet direct conversation. Option number three, use the boyfriend card. Option number four, get interested in someone else, regardless if it's real or imaginary. And option number five, ask someone else to deliver the message. Good options, huh? What yeah, do you think? Definitely good options and they definitely have more to that than just a title. So yes, that's correct. So let's start with the first one, guys. And it's the Raging Bull Strategy. I really love this uh, title, although I have to say I love all the options because they are like our babies. But this is not my favorite option, although it's an option nevertheless. So basically here we would advise you just to approach him head on next time he does something that you perceive as potentially creepy. So next time he will bring you a chocolate, a beer, or you will find him again at the gym or he will walk you home. Just turn around and say, listen, dude, stop stalking me. So that's actually the raging bull strategy. I think we've had quite a nice uh, perspective from Lessa uh, on our first part. So Lessa, how would you feel if a girl comes like a raging bull and, you know, just kind of like comes and, hey, dude, stop stalking me. <laughs> What's the risk here? What's the risk? Um, I don't that, <laughs> that's like a super, I don't know, aggressive approach, really weird. And I mean, it sounds like he's really into her. So he follows her home and goes to the same gym. That might be a thing that might not be a thing. But if he's not stalking her, <laughs> I would think if, if I was just happened to go at the same gym uh, and I really liked someone, but maybe not like in a stalker way, and it was just a super awkward, weird team. And someone said, let's say, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> like, relax. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, you can also end up looking maybe like an insane person if there's nothing there, you know, like, I really like you, but I'm not stalking you. Like, but uh, yeah, I think maybe that's 
too aggressive, uh, a little, and you assume something and then you act on it like immediately. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think that there are there are two two things here to take into consideration. First is that the girl can come as a really crazy bad shit chick. Sorry for my language. Like what the hell? Like you you don't approach people like this. So she actually might be the crazy one. The other thing is that he might actually really like her and that would really hurt his feelings. So there are actually two, how do you say it? Two sides of the same coin. Yes. I got yeah. that right, yeah. So I, um, when, uh, because that option actually came from, from someone and I asked the girl like, yeah, don't you think it's a little bit too drastic? And she said, yeah, but she will get rid of him, right? And I was like, well, point taken, it's effective solution, but is it really the the best solution? I don't know, but it, it, it is effective. It, it, I mean, it, I guess it also depends on how long has this gone on for, you know, if she is really uncomfortable and this is something that has gone on for months, you would maybe feel like you really get pushed into a corner and like, dude, seriously, stop, you know? Yeah. I mean, so that also depends on how long has this gone on for and yeah. Definitely, if she would try the next option a couple of times and it wouldn't work, yeah. maybe then that option would also have its place. Yeah, and then it might be necessary, you know, in that case. Yeah, exactly, because Tetra, we don't really know um, if you had the conversation, but from what we read in a challenge, it doesn't really look like. It's more like, okay, it's that kind of an awkward dance. He gives me something, brings me something. I have never approached this situation. I don't know what to do. So I guess option number one, it's an option for people who are really like, really exhausted with this because we actually have option two, which I think could be potentially better. And that is go for a friendly Yet direct conversation. So for this one, you have to grow your lady balls, of course. You have to, because talking about things like this usually is awkward. You need to have some sort of a co courage to approach it thoughtfully and also risking that the guy actually is not into you because that's still a big factor f here, I think. So uh, next time he will do something like that, we would advise you just to, you know, take him on the side or for a walk around the building and just tell him, hey, listen, uh, it's all really nice, but I have to say this makes me uncomfortable. I am not sure if I'm, let's say, reading signs here wrongly, but I would like it to stop. And what's the risk here? There is very low risk, right? Because even if the guy is not into her, he'll be like, oh, sorry, I didn't know. Uh, I'm not really into you or anything like that. Uh, and I think Lessa wants to comment on that. But, well, I think that's a great approach to it. Um, of course, I don't know the guy or the girl personally, but I think when he acts like this, I actually think he is into her. But if she is not into him, somehow he needs to know and also, this is to the guy, if he listens to this, maybe you're super awkward or introverted. I have been there. It will get better through the years and you will get attention from ladies when you get older. Trust me, it's not an issue. But the thing is that uh, you, you need to like stop acting that way because it is strange. But, but just to get back on track, that's a really nice way to do it. You know, try just to have a conversation that you're probably a really nice guy and it's nice that you're doing all these things, but I'm not into you um, because somehow he needs to know and maybe he just doesn't, he's shy and he doesn't know how to approach her. So he just hangs out with her and follows her and all this. And But it's weird if you never tell what your intentions really are. Like, I think he's into her, but he needs to tell her if he is. And if she's not into him, then then it ends. That's it, you know? Yeah. It sucks, but you have to move on. And maybe you can still be good friends, you know? But I mean, of course, it will suck <laughs> in the beginning, but she needs to know, like, are you really into me? And it sounds like she's not into him. So yeah. there has to be some communication there. So they both know what what's the situation here. Like, yeah, I, I think that uh, what stops Tetra if I'm reading this correctly, is that they are classmates. They work mm -hmm. on the same assignments. They are at the same group at university. So I think what she's uh, afraid of here is that she will have this conversation and then it will become awkward. And you know, uh, from what I can read, the guy seems to be a, the kind of a nice guy. But sometimes imagine, you know, you will approach your colleague or, or, or a guy at work or whatever. I'm not really interested. And then he might get angry. And then maybe he will be mean to her or make some kind 
kind of comments because another thing here is she actually probably did accept those chocolates and beers she doesn't know how to get out of it so maybe he thinks okay she's receptive then maybe he builds up and builds up and builds up and then when she will say you know what i'm sorry this makes me feel awkward and then he would have this thought in her head so why did you let me on even if she didn't and because it's in the environment when they meet and they have to work together i think this is her problem i think this option is still very good but it has a depending on on those two people it, there is a potential you know, that, that it can get awkward or even a little bit nasty. But I, I think this uh, this actually is the, you know, the honest, direct, nice option. But I mean, it, it already sounds like the situation is awkward right now. So why not talk about it? Exactly. I, I totally agree. Uh, so now we have option number three, which is use the boyfriend card. Marta, have you ever used the boyfriend card? So like, have I ever been in a situation that uh, there is a guy who likes me and I don't like him? And I use the boyfriend card like I pretended I had a boyfriend to get rid of him. I actually think no, I think actually something opposite happened to me. Like there was a guy who was into me, I was not into him and I talked to him and I said, look, I'm really sorry, it's not gonna work out. I'm not looking for any relationship right now. And then I had a new boyfriend very quickly after that. <laughs> so I think uh, it was the other way around awkward. But I, you know, it was not intentional. I was not seeing another guy at that point of time. I just met someone uh, soon after that I really fell for. Uh, so it was a coincidence. Uh, I, I tried to be honest with this guy and tell him that, look, I'm really sorry, you're a nice guy, but there is nothing here uh, and I, I'm not into the relationship right now. But if you meet the right person, then the relationship happens quickly and naturally because you hit it off both of you at the same time. Okay, guys, I will just make a small detour because what you have said is actually a really cool thing. Uh, many times I think we do have a situation when we say to someone, I'm not looking for a relationship and then we engage with someone else. And I would just like to send again a message to the world. Message to the world. Many times it's not because we are lying, it's because we really meet that right person just soon after, you know, and uh, for, for, for some right people, for people that are really like, you know, hitting our heart, I think we can just suddenly be into relationships, even if two weeks before we thought we don't really want a relationship. So that was a really interesting thing. But with the boyfriend card, what we are proposing for you, Tetra, is that start to mention your boyfriend, even if you don't have any. And that is something I have used from time to time, not usually with colleagues or something, but randomly if I'm somewhere out in a in a bar or in a club and there are let's say someone who is hitting on me and I'm not interested I actually say that I have a boyfriend and Marta I don't know if you remember but some years ago I think we were in a in a bar in Odense where we were studying and we used the the merit card or something. Ah, like we were dancing and there were those guys coming, yes. approaching us and uh, we were like uh, waving our wedding rings on them. Well, actually, the thing was that we were married at that time, yes. not, not with each other. <laughs> OK, that was a bad example. But yeah, we used it. We used it. And uh, but I use a boyfriend card many times because it just saves so much trouble. I don't want to lie to someone, but, you know, you will you start you want to be nice, you know, I appreciate when a guy comes and hit on me because I know that it takes courage. It takes courage to go to the girl and start to have a conversation. So I never want to be mean. I don't want to say like back off or, you know, but if I'm not interested, I think, you know, I'm sorry, I have a boyfriend. It's just a very simple way to cut it off. Marta, you're laughing. I want to know why you're laughing. I am laughing. It's because, you know, guys, I've been married for 12 years and with the same guy for almost 15. And I was like, does it even happen to me? Can I remember anything, you know, from these kind of things that there was a guy hitting on me and I just remembered such an awkward situation. I was actually pregnant. Yes. Yeah. And my and I was at a party at my friend's place. My husband was not there. And there was this guy like really hitting on me. And I was like, you know, trying to kind of like show my hand and so on. And he was not reacting. He was like really into me. He was like really like looking at me in this way. You really know. <laughs> <laughs> you can really sense. And then I started, it was an early pregnancy, mm -hmm. but I started kind of like, you know, to put the hand on my belly. <laughs> 
oh to scare God. him off because I didn't know what to do. I kind yeah. of like I actually even brought like I'm married and I have a husband, but he was like really, you know, still kind of. But this thing of the belly. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> that really worked. He he never spoke to me again at the entire party. So uh, you know what, Tetra, if you have like a really persistent admirer that nothing will kind of, you know, like scare him off, pretend you're pregnant. <laughs> Actually, that's even better than the boyfriend card. So just, yeah, show that you are invested in something else. Either it's a man or it's a growing another human in your belly. That could be an option. Yeah, I, I think actually it's pretty cool. And I know some girls, well, no, Marta, you, you just reached a new level, I have to say, with your story. But I know uh, a girl at work that had a colleague that was inviting her out. And she actually had a boyfriend, but she couldn't really find the, the balance. She didn't know if it's just a colleague invitation or something. And she was like, Anna, what should I do? We work together. And he invited me for the cinema. And I don't know if this is like, you know, two colleagues going to cinema or something. I said, use your boyfriend. He was actually the real boyfriend. She had a boyfriend. I was like, tell him that's a really lovely invitation for the cinema. I was actually planning to see this movie with my boyfriend. Maybe you would like to join us. She was like, yeah, actually, I could say that. And I think this is this is perfect because you are not awkward. You are saying, yeah, actually, you know, we could go with my boyfriend because we were planning, you know, we can go three of us. Maybe you can bring a girl. You are solving the situation and you also save, I would say, the face for the guy because you pretend like you had no idea he's hitting on you. So his honor is intact and you are getting out of the situation. And we have also option number four which is very similar to it because we are advising you to get interested in someone else regardless if it's real or imaginary. And that option is almost the same as the boyfriend card, but it's reserved for you in case you actually don't want to get out of the market. Because if you will tell to that uh, gentleman that you have a boyfriend, then of course other people around will also hear that you have a boyfriend and maybe you are looking for someone. So in order to stay single, yet send a message, you can just simply pretend or be interested in someone else. Then you might uh, recruit a new uh, persistent admirer accidentally. So uh, I'm not sure if this is a very safe. I mean, imagine a Tetra is a really like attractive girl mm -hmm. and she start pretending she's into another guy, unless it's an imaginary guy. If it is an imaginary guy, that could work better because if she would start to pretend she's into another like classmate, that could make her two persistent admirers accidentally. That's actually correct. But let's imagine a situation, you know, that Tetra and her admirer are having a conversation. I assume they are. And maybe she can actually approach him. She can friend zone him in a way like, uh, listen, you know, you are a guy and we are good friends and I actually like someone, but I'm not sure how to approach him. Can you please advise me something? That could be also an option. Lasse, do you think that we are two, we are tricksters here and we are advising morally condemned things? Uh, no, I mean, I've never tried uh, being on the other side of that situation. Um, but if someone keeps approaching you and you're just not interested, and especially if it's someone you don't know. I mean, of course, it's different if it's a colleague from work or one you know from school. But I would imagine being on the other side and there's a weird guy that keeps approaching you and you're just not interesting. I mean, if you want it to end, I have a boyfriend. Like, you know, that I can How see. How would you that... react if you would be in this situation? If you, for instance, like a girl and, you know, you bring her chocolates, beers, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then at one point, she just mentioned boyfriend. I guess you would. Of course, if I was interested in her, like romantically in mm -hmm. that way, of course, I would stop at that point, you know. So, so actually, it's a good solution, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're in that situation and you just want it to end, yeah. of course, you know, do whatever works at that yeah. point. Because if the guy just doesn't get the hint, well, then you have to really exaggerate or do something. So back off. I'm not interested, you know. But of course, you don't want to maybe hurt his feelings. But if it's getting uncomfortable, yeah, that would yeah. work. I would say so. Yeah, I think that most of the time this approach would work, you know, the yeah. boyfriend or I am into someone else. Mm. Although there can be situations when a guy still doesn't give up because he either hopes for something or he tries to but he doesn't look like a type of guy but from my experience I know that there are men who are not really taking taking no for an answer in a sense that you have a boyfriend 
do you want a better one? You know, that kind of, it, it can happen, but I don't read it from this challenge, but it, it can happen actually. It uh, might well, be even invitation for more of a conquest. Uh, con uh, guys, help me. Con conquer? Super English. Conquer, conquer, yes. Yes, it could be. Have you ever been in such a situation? Like, what do you do? <laughs> well, I have been like, I had to yeah, like, the, literally the bring the <laughs> belly. The baby, yeah. 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 Uh, so, yeah. I have encountered situations, not many and not very drastic, but you know, I was saying that I s I'm seeing someone else and the guy is like, okay, I will wait. I'm patient. I'm like, wow. okay, yeah, wow, <laughs> exactly. So okay. it can happen, but you know, uh, I think I've heard once about situation. My friend had it. She, she actually, you know, the guy really fell in love with her, like really, really. And she said, I'm, I have a boyfriend, I'm in a relationship. And he was like, I don't care. I will get you. I will get you. I'm in love with me, uh, with you. We should be together and so on, so on. So it can go different ways, but usually at this level when it's only chocolate beer and and some kind of a gentle stalking i think sending a message i'm interested in someone else or i have a boyfriend should be enough normal person should kind of you know back out and then we have option five which is ask someone else to deliver a message and i think that partially we are doing this today for Tetra, if uh, what she have written in a challenge is true, meaning uh, that the, the guy is actually following the same Facebook pages as she is, he might come across this challenge and he might actually realize it's about him. So maybe we are doing that partially. What do you think, Marta? I think if we are doing that indeed, I uh, really actually would like that because I think Lasse with uh, his uh, comments have actually given quite some good input to that guy. He really comes across as a nice guy, like someone who comes up with chocolates and uh, beers and stuff. It, it seems like a nice guy. So actually, I think it would be a good thing if he was listening to that. I am thinking also that actually someone else delivering that message could be something that would also help him save his face, like we say it, right? So because if it is, first of all, it's awkward already now. If uh, if Tetra goes and tries to talk to him directly, it creates more awkwardness and they have to interact later. If she would use like a good common friend, since they are classmates, that could actually also have quite some benefits. Of course, it's nice to be honest and talk to someone directly. Of course, it's it's probably one of those like vulnerable and good and solid solutions. But if you would like to avoid some awkwardness in a class when working on the assignments together and so on, it could actually be quite a good option. Yeah, I think so too. I think the only uh, risk would be uh, depending how obvious this is, because if it's not very obvious and she includes another person into the situation, so basically she tells other person he likes me and I don't like him. Can you please do something about about it? Can you please talk with him? He might feel weird that she told someone else, right? But that depends on the situation and the context because it doesn't have to be a direct talk. You know, let's have a sit up. Let's talk. I will tell you something. It can be also like mentioned in a conversation, you know, or, or something. So it doesn't have to be a very direct delivery, but it can be done, I guess. It can be done in a nice and thoughtful way as well. What do you think, Lasse, if, if you were in that situation, how would you react? I mean, it's a really complicated situation since they're going in the same class. Um, <clears throat> I, I actually think it could risk getting... First of all, I don't think it's fair that she has to be the one that has to like tell him like he should tell her what he feels, you know, even if he's insecure or awkward because it puts a lot of pressure on her and she only has her own ideas and her own thoughts about it. Um, so first of all, I don't think that's fair in a way. Second of all, if you get a person from the outside telling him that, look, she's not into you in that way and it could maybe actually make the situation more awkward, I think, in a way. I really guess it depends on who the person is she gets to tell him, but maybe he will also start to think that, oh, she thinks I'm super weird. Like, she doesn't even want to tell it to me myself. Is she, like, scared of me or think I'm, like, just the weirdest guy on the earth, you know? Yeah. So I actually think it's not fair that she has to tell him, but I think she has to tell him in person, to be honest. 
because it could risk making the situation even more awkward and weird. And maybe he would become even more like introverted and you know, oh, she doesn't even want to talk to me in person. She gets someone else to do it. It's a complicated situation. But yeah, actually, Lasse, you, you have a point that I haven't thought about before, you know, that actually he should tell her, right? Yeah. This is this is really interesting perspective because indeed, if he really likes her, he should be more direct. Yes. And I think one of the biggest learnings from making this podcast today is that people should be more direct with each other. I know it's difficult. I know it's hard. I know it requires courage. But guys, if we are more direct with each other, we are avoiding all this awkwardness, all this build up, all this overthinking. It, it's striking for me because I, I know this challenge. We wrote about this challenge. And now I just have this thought, you know, if people would be direct and it doesn't mean that you have to be direct, like straightforward, very blunt person, no, just course. direct and okay. have the, the guts to say stuff. Because in the end of the day, what is the worst thing that will happen? What's the worst thing that will happen? OK, so she will say no, you know, or she will say yes. But like sometimes it's good to put yourself and think, what's the worst thing that can happen? World will not end if I will tell that girl that I like her. If she will reject me, then maybe in a month I will meet another one. Or she can feel like this is really a burden for me. But if I will tell him that I'm not interested, I will just release a lot of awkwardness. And yeah, it will be painful. It's like, you know, taking out the, the plaster from your wound. But uh, then it will get better. So I think that's my learning from here. It could be such a simple solution, right? If yeah. the guy, he, he wouldn't even have to tell her, look, I really like you or whatever. He could just simply try to ask her out and she would then have a direct opportunity to say, look, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm not interested or look, I'm seeing someone else or whatever. But it would be such a simple solution. We wouldn't have to come up with all the five options and all the <laughs> other five options. Yeah. <laughs> so, Although the Mercedes approach, sorry, guys, but that's just brilliant. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, Tetra, darling, we do hope that you will find this podcast useful. We also hope for everyone that, guys, you will find a little bit of courage in you to be more direct with who you like and who you don't like, because the worst thing that will happen is that it will just hurt a little, but then you can move on. So I think that's the message for today. And I think we are almost about to be done, right? Because I see, yeah. you know, there is a disturbance on the other side. I think they are trying to signal me that we should be out, right? Yes. So what we can say is that Tetra, we hope that you actually gather your lady balls and uh, figure out a good way to resolve that situation in the best possible way, taking under consideration the circumstances. Or if it was you, the friend of Tetra who has been listening, we hope that you find your manly balls uh, <laughs> to ask her out uh, or just stop doing what you're doing since you already know she's not into you. But yeah, good luck. Yeah, asking her out after this podcast would be definitely weird, I think, you know, <laughs> unless he wants to really check if this is about him. So yeah, but thanks a lot, guys, for today. And remember to join us on Friday for our live show. Odd Friday. This was Anna and Marta from You've Got Five Options and Lasse. Exactly. And Lasse. So guys, we will hear you next Monday or Friday if it's not Friday. So take care and have a great rest of the week. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show. Remember that we are on air every Monday, Wednesday and every second Friday. Remember that you can visit our website www.you'vegot5options.com That is www.youvegot5 as a number options.com where you can submit your challenge and find our podcast. You can also find us on iTunes or any podcast app. Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz.